On first down, the handoff to Marlon Mack. Huge hole, 50 yard line. He's at the 40, still going near sideline. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, and he will score. Touchdown, Marlon Mack. Touchdown, INDY. And again, it's picked up. It's Darius Leonard. Leonard with his second INT, and he's streaking down the near sideline. He's at the 40, he's at the 30, he's at the 20. He's going to go. A pick six for the Maniac. Kenny Moore gets to Deshaun Watson. That's a sack for Kenny Moore. Kenny has a pick and now a sack in the game. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What's up, Colts Nation? Welcome back to the Bring the Juice podcast. I'm your co-host, Derek Larger, and joining me today is our very own Andrew Thomason. Andrew, how are you doing today? Doing well, Derek. How are you? Oh, I'm not too bad, man. You know, uh, things are starting to look a little bit more positive in the world right now, dealing with the coronavirus and talking more about sports. I mean, it seems to be going a little bit better of a direction than what it was a little bit ago. So uh, things are going positive. You know, we can uh, only hope for the best. And today Colts fans have some more to talk about. We just, uh, it's not been official yet, but it looks like it's going to become official after today. The Indianapolis Colts have made another move where they are now signing free agent Roosevelt Nix, the former fullback from the Pittsburgh Steelers. The reports are that it's going to be a one-year deal. The amount of money that they're paying him hasn't been disclosed yet, but uh, that basically the Colts are going to have a fullback now for the first time in a long time, and I think Andrew's going to mention that. Uh, Andrew, what are your thoughts, uh, your initial thoughts on the Roosevelt Knicks signing? I like the signing quite a bit, actually. Um, you know, just as a, a side note here, Frank Reich said last year, you know, he was adamant about the Colts being a a top five rush team. Now, they were top seven, um, so they were very, very close. But I think this sort of signing with with Knicks at fullback sort of just confirms that Frank Reich isn't ready to just move on from that idea, if you will. He wants to double down. He wants to say, okay, we're going to bring in more pieces to help better our running game, even though we were top, you know, top seven last year. Um, and honestly, the, the signing is sort of, it, it's one that, that the Colts really, we, we don't typically see in their offense. They usually go with a two or three tight end set. Um, and usually when they run out of an I formation or out of a two tight end set, there are sometimes a, a fullback is, is used, but it's actually a tight end um, instead of an actual fullback. So I, I really like the Knicks signing. Yeah, I definitely like the uh, Knicks signing as well. It's one of those signings that, again, it's not going to make anyone, you know, seem to, you know, knock the rocks off of anybody. But you have to understand the importance of a Roosevelt Knicks, right? There's obviously Roosevelt Knicks has never been known for his stats, has never been known for that. Um, He's just been a part of helping the Pittsburgh Steelers with their run offense over the last several years and being 28 years old, obviously still has quite a bit in the tank. I would imagine Uh, a a guy that is five eleven, two hundred 260 pounds. He's basically my, my height and my weight, but basically is just a lot more muscle than myself. Uh, And I mean, 260 pounds of muscle is phenomenal. That's hard for, that's hard for anybody to take a contact from something like that. Even a defensive lineman doesn't like to be hit with somebody that's that big. But uh, what you have to look at is the significance of a Roosevelt Knicks. You look at uh, what was the, why, why would we sign a fullback, right? Uh, You have to look at the the reason you would have a fullback is you want a guy that's a run blocker for an I formation set most times. And obviously the Colts love to run the football. The Colts are designed to want to do that. And with a fullback, you would have one less tight end out there. And, or if you didn't, you would just simply put that tight end out there as more of a uh, pass catcher. But look at what Roosevelt Knicks did for 
uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers when they had him versus when he was away. When Roosevelt Nix was not in the game, it, it definitely hurt the Pittsburgh Steelers run game, especially up the middle, because Roosevelt Nix finds those holes that he's supposed to plug and get those linebackers that try to seep through. And he does a phenomenal job in doing so. And I think Roosevelt Nix does really well to uh, complement the run style of a Marlon Mack. Uh, we saw last season how Marlon Mack's vision and patience grew last season, uh, waiting for the offensive line to develop blocks. And Roosevelt Nix just did the exact same thing for James Conner in Pittsburgh. Uh, James Conner was able to just watch the block happen. And then Roosevelt just hit those linebackers. Conner seat through. And I mean, he got consistently great runs. Uh, and obviously that's exactly why you would want to get a Roosevelt Knicks because you know what he provides you in the run game as an extra blocker, especially on uh, situations at the goal line uh, in plays where it's third down and two, third down and one, those kinds of plays where you want to get those short yardage. Well, Roosevelt Knicks at 260 pounds certainly is a good option to have hitting a linebacker for sure. Uh, and you know, again, it's one of those situations where, again, he's not going to be used in many different ways. He's just somebody that, uh, you haven't, that the Colts just have not had. We've seen them, you know, try to use fullbacks or, uh, as tight ends, or, um, we had tight ends and linemen come down and be those guys. Uh, I thought I saw somebody on Twitter mention that Roosevelt Nix should be the fullback and just lead Quentin Nelson in for a touchdown. That would be really funny. But um, yeah, so it just kind of give me a little bit more, Andrew, on you know Roosevelt Nix and what you think he can be can be used for in this Colts offensive scheme, the way they want to run the football. Well, as I mentioned before, Derek, it's no secret that Frank Reich and this Colts offense, uh, they want to run the ball and they want to be able to do so on a consistent basis. And when you bring in a guy like Roosevelt Nix, a guy that was a pro bowler for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2017, um, I, I can think of some other NFL fullbacks off the top of, up the, uh, top of my head, Kyle Juszczyk, Patrick uh, Ricard, uh, some other guys as well. And if you, you receive a, a nod for the pro bowl as a fullback, that, that sort of, I mean, receiving a Pro Bowl not in and of itself is, is fantastic, but as a fullback, you don't really typically see, uh, but maybe the same two or three fullbacks. So when Rosas made the Pro Bowl in 2017, it's it's certainly um, a test to, to how well he played for the Steelers and how, as you mentioned, Derek, he was able to help open up running lanes for James Conner and, and Samuel and some of the other running backs that the Steelers have as well. Um, and just another quick note on the Colts fullbacks overall. The last fullback that I remember the Colts really using was a Stanley Havili, and he was more of a pass-catching fullback than a, a run blocker. Now, um, I don't think he was as big as Roosevelt Nix, and he certainly wasn't going to um, do or play with the same sort of style that Roosevelt Nix plays with. Um, but speaking of that same style, there is a guy that the Colts had back in 1954 by the name of Alan Amechi or Amici. I, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing his name. Um, he was actually with the Baltimore Colts back when you know, we were we were in Baltimore before Indianapolis, and he played with us all through the 1954 um, season, all the way through 1960, and his nickname was the Iron Horse. Uh, and I'm not saying Nix is going to be, you know, the next iron horse, I suppose, but he's certainly going to help uh, improve this running game. Absolutely. And it, it just makes sense, you know, when you're looking for another guy that, you know, provides that option to help that run game. And obviously when we're talking about money, I mean, that's ultimately what you're going to think of for any of these picks. There's no way that, the Colts are going to be providing Knicks with a $1 million or above contract. I don't see it. It's probably going to be something around the horn of a, uh, of a potential veterans minimum, or maybe even around 500 grand, something of that uh, magnitude. I don't see much more than that. Obviously for a fullback, you're really not going to pay that much, but again, it just adds that element of specialty and that element of, of, 
aggressiveness at the line that the Colts are trying to get. You mentioned it, Andrew, their top seven in the NFL last season in rushing, which obviously they want to continue to do, but they also want to continue to get better at it. And with that ability to run the football, again, that's just going to help Phillip Rivers at the end of the day. Phillip Rivers doesn't have to throw the football as much as he did last year. He's going to be able to throw the ball a lot less, and then it just keeps him from getting hit. I mean, again, it's a non-flashy move, but it's just something that, as a Colts fan, you're thinking, oh, okay, we got another piece that can help our run attack out. You got him for literally almost nothing. You take virtually no hit to your cap. You can still make a move. So, again, it's just a another classic Chris Ballard, Frank Reich move that you just are looking to improve the run game. All right, well, I think that's going to do it for us. Uh, that is our take on the Roosevelt Knicks trade over, or uh, signing, I should say. Uh, very good uh, signing for the Colts in regards to the run game. Uh, Andrew, do you have anything else you wanted to say before we hop off here? I think this is going to turn out to be a, a, another solid signing by Chris Ballard and, and Frank Reich and others. Um, and I appreciate you guys having me on as always. Oh, no problem, man. Thanks for being on. So thank you guys so much again for the Colts uh, support. We really appreciate everything you guys are doing for us. We hope you enjoyed. And as always, go Colts.